topic for today is autism moms. There are a lot of Facebook groups, a lot of social media groups for the parents of children with autism. And some of these identify themselves as autism moms, autism fathers, things of that nature. And these groups tend to wind up having, coming into conflict with the autistic community. And I'll break down some of the reasons why and break down how we can sort of make a better relationship. Problem number one is an issue of semantics, but words do matter. If I were to have a blind child, then I would not identify as a blind father, I would identify as the father of a blind child. If I were to have a black child, if I were to adopt a black child, or if I were to have a kid with a black woman, I would not identify as a black father, I would identify as the father of a black person, the father of a black child. So the autism moms, autism fathers label is a, is a very strange one. It's almost unique, I would say, to this particular community. And it's problematic because when you identify yourself that way, you are taking attention off of the child and putting it on yourself. That's a really big deal for the autistic community because it's a problem we struggle with constantly. We are excluded from the conversation about us. For example, Autism Speaks and Next for Autism and a lot of these other organizations don't have autistic people on their boards of directors. They don't consult with autistic people when they make the recommendations for how to take care of autistic children and you wind up with situations like ABA therapy. People who have gone through it report things like post-traumatic stress disorder, and they report that it just doesn't help them. But they're not being listened to because the autistic community, people with autism, are not focused on, we're not part of the conversation. And realistically, to help us we need to be in the conversation, those of us who can be in the conversation. Additionally, there's this trend with people who use the autism mom's label, that they're sort of buying into the mentality that having a child with autism is a disaster, that it ruins your family, that your child's life is ruined, that your life is ruined. And I understand it can be difficult to deal with autistic children. My child is autistic, and even as someone who myself is diagnosed autistic, it's not always the easiest thing to deal with. But my daughter is a beautiful, wonderful person and is the best thing in my life. And even without proper diagnosis or really any kind of help, I've had an amazing life, so to treat having someone like me as a child as this is the worst thing that could possibly happen, frankly, it's offensive, and it's a problem for you and for your child because you're identifying your child as this disaster, as this burden, and when you identify that way, you're alienating a lot of people who could help, who could give helpful advice, and be useful sources of information, both to you and to your child. Now, as I said, having an autistic child can be difficult, so I'm certainly open to having conversations with parents of children who have autism, but this has to come from a place of mutual respect. It has to come from a place of, oh, this guy is autistic. He probably has some ideas, some suggestions for how I can better help my child. There again, the emphasis is on the child. It's about the child. It's not about you. And when it becomes about you and not your child, you get into some things you see, for example, on social media, there's a weird trend of people essentially doing these 
these home documentaries about their kids. Kids are too young to give any kind of knowledge, um, knowledgeable consent or permission. Sort of documenting their kids' private lives and throwing them up on YouTube for the public to consume. There's a guy called Autism Father, and I'm not going to put a link to his page because I'm not doing anything, even with my you know tens of followers. I don't want anybody following his YouTube. What's essentially happening is it's treating these children like circus freaks. And I don't think that anybody would, would be t tolerant of that if it was any other type of child. But because autistic people aren't viewed as people, as we aren't, we, we are viewed as not having, not being deserving of the humanity and respect and consideration that, that others are afforded. It's just sort of okay to do things like provoke an autistic meltdown and then film your child having this meltdown in order to get more clicks. I can't even believe I'm saying this. The words, I kind of can't believe YouTube allows it to happen. It's a clear case of child abuse. But these people do it, and these people get away with it. And neither YouTube nor the government systems that are meant to protect children seem to be inclined to stop it or step in. So, to sort of recap, if you're the parent of an autistic child, if your child has been diagnosed with autism, absolutely, you know, reach out, you know, message me, find other parents to talk to, find people within the autistic community to interact with who, who can help you and and you know make informed intelligent decisions but your life isn't over your child's life isn't over this isn't an unmitigated catastrophe where you have somehow lost your child you have a child who has a different neurotype than you and that child will love you and you will love that child and everything will be fine if you decide to make it fine if you decide to be a responsible and loving and caring parent and focus on raising the best human being you can possibly raise rather than on covering your car with puzzle piece logos and crying about how difficult your life is. As always, I thank you for watching. If you found this video interesting, informative, helpful, it was a nice way to pass the time, then please leave a like and please subscribe for more content.